We have discussed the definitions of SAC and person. Today we will discuss what is an income under the Indian Income Tax Act 1961. Okay. The definition of income if you will see. Section 2, subsection 24. First is profits and gains from business and profession. You know business. Business is any trade, commerce or manufacture or any adventure or concern in the nature of such trade, commerce or manufacture. Profession is an expertise knowledge applied by an expert person for his clients like a doctor, lawyer, chartered accountant, cost and management accountant, company secretary, engineer, decorator, engineer, architect, teacher. So a number of professionals are there who are qualified with a expert degree awarded by a recognized university in India. Okay. So any such profits and gains. Second is dividends received by investors in Indian capital market. Income from investment. Dividend on <coughs> preference shares. Dividend on equity shares. They are also incomes. Voluntary contributions received by trust. Yesterday I told you what is trust. Author sets aside some property in the hands of trustee or trust manager for the benefits of beneficiary. That is trust. Okay. The trust which is registered under the Bombay Public Trust Act or Maharashtra Public Trust Act. Perquisites or profits in lieu of salary taxable under section 17, subsection 2 and subsection 3. Sorry, section 17, subsection 2 and clause A. Clear? So clause 3. So section 17 talks about perquisites. What is perquisites? Perquisites means any non-monetary benefit given by employer to the employer. For example, I am a manager who is a budget automobile and the company has given me a Mercedes car for going from my home to office. I am using company's car. Maybe I am using company's petrol if benefit is extended. So it is called as perquisite. Is that clear? It is called as perquisite or non-monetary benefit. That are taxable, that are converted into Money value, various examples are there. Rent free accommodation given by employee to employee, rent free furnished accommodation, or rent free unfurnished accommodation, or furnished or unfurnished accommodation given at a concessional rent. These are the examples of perquisites. Car provided by employer to employee, perquisites, or profits in lieu of salary. So that will be converted into monetary terms and it will be brought under tax name okay the special allowances especially in case of salary different special allowances are granted by employer to the employee now there are various examples the list is very long uh, children education allowance hostel expenditure allowance tribal area allowance city compensatory allowance counter insurgency allowance hilly area allowance Uniform allowance, lunch allowance, conveyance allowance, traveling allowance. Is that clear? Various examples are there under special allowances. Over and above the salary, extra amount is paid by employer to the employee. It comes under special allowances. Clear? Then conveyance allowance. What is conveyance? Conveyance is the allowance paid for commuting the distance between office and residence or residence to office. That is called as conveyance. If it is received by an employee, it is taxable as salary, income. <coughs> then benefits received by representative SSC. Yesterday we discussed. Re representative SSC is the SSC which represents minor beneficiary. If you receive any benefits, then it is taxable under uh, the definition of income. Now next is benefits or purchases received by director of a company in which he has a substantial interest then it is also taxable any amount received as a dividend any way of contribution any non-monetary benefit received from such company in which a director or any other person who has close interest substantial interest then it is taxable as income 
it is some chargeable under section 28 3a 3b 3c or 28 4 3a is what when any person receives any amount under import license under indian customs act from the government government declares some schemes that is 3a 3b is what any sum received or export from government any way of benefit 3b 3c is what 3c is import export ah, duty drawback under the central excise and tariff act 1932 duty drawback is the concept to provide set off for payment of import or export duty by an SEC under indirect taxes it comes central excise and tariff act now this act has been withdrawn by the parliament and GST has been replaced tax on goods and services ok 28.4 is perquisites any non-monetary facility or benefit received by any person then it comes under section 28 sub section 4 all these are incomes then capital gains taxable under section 45 I told you two types of capital gains long term and short term long term capital gain means if asset is held by an SSC for a period more than 3 years long term less than 3 years short term in case of shares, thrift, bonds, debentures the period is 12 months about 12 months long term less than 12 months short term there is different rates of taxes I told you flat rate of 20% is there for long term capital gains and section 54 uh, exemptions are also available for long term capital gains 54B, 54D, 54E, 54EC, 54F, 54 uh, these are the exemptions for uh, long term capital gain then sums issued for not carrying out any profession or any business or not sharing of any knowledge of IPR what is IPR? Huh? Very good. Intellectual property rights. What are the examples of intellectual property rights? Right answer. Number one, designs. Number two, copyrights. Number three, three, trademarks. Number four, patents. What is patents? Patent is a monopolistic right granted to a person for finding out any major manner or process of manufacture. Any know-how, technology to perform a particular operation that is called as know-how. Copyright is given to authors or lyrics writers for publishing any original work of literature that is copyright. These are what? These are intellectual property rights which are guided by Indian Patents Act 1970, Indian Designs Act, Indian Copyrights Act like. Then income from other sources, already you know, winning from lottery winning from races like horse races derby races you can say winning from crossword puzzles reality shows like one money or more of you taxable income from other sources gambling betting smuggling even i told you yesterday that income tax act is not concerned with the legality of the business if there is income tax will be chargeable then employee contribution to provident fund for employee or his superannuation fund if employer is paid, it is income for employee. The gifts received exceeding rupees 50,000 to individual and Hindu undivided family. Or any issue of shares by a closely held company exceeding fair market value of that particular shares. If there is difference between concentration and fair market value of shares given by closely held company, then it is income in the hands of a recipient. If any questions there, you can ask me. Any question, any doubt? That's all.